All right, friends, let's open Blender again. Let's get rid of that splash pad. Just click on it. We're going to click delete and get rid of the cube. I'll hit one to go into front orthographic mode, which you can see right here. I will add a mesh monkey. I wanted to show you a couple of other things that I recently learned. And uh, see this move tool right here? Um, apparently, if you click on that move tool and you just grab the monkey, you can just move it around. I'm just, I just grabbed it and I, I clicked and held and I'm moving that monkey all over the place. That's awesome. If I go into uh, hit three, side mode, I can grab it and move it all over the Y, Z axis. So I'm moving it around that plane and I'm only doing that because I'm in orthographic mode. Okay, so as soon as I click my middle mouse button and I start rotating around like that, now when I grab it, oh, it wants to, I accidentally must have grabbed that blue arrow. I need to, yeah, see now I can move it in all three dimensions. So remember, there are times when you're not going to want to move it in all three dimensions because you might scroll back and go, oh, that's not where I wanted it. It looks deceiving sometimes. Okay, and remember that pan. I'm going to pan over here a little bit here so I can see what I've got going on. Um, what else was I going to say? Hmm. So I've got my monkey over here, and let's say I want to get it back to the origin really quick. So to remember that Shift S brings me to my snap. Well, notice there's the selection to cursor, okay? And I have Suzanne selected. So if I click selection to cursor, make sure that I've got the gray selection to cursor and boom. Okay, so you saw it with your own eyes. Yay. Okay, so what that does is I can hit one and get back into orthographic mode. And I can now pan this back over to the center. Um, let's say I'm like this. Okay. Um, I can grab this transform tool right here. And I know we looked at this before, so these green arrows mean that you can slide or translate it, right, from um, side to side along these different axes. I'm going to go ahead and um, once again, I'm going to hit the number seven. No, that doesn't, I thought that might be a shortcut. Um, I'm going to snap selection to cursor again, so it's in the middle. I can also move along two axes, okay, and exclude one. And I've got to be on the move tool. Let me go ahead and cl click the move tool. Sorry, that's the one that I meant. On the move tool, when you um, grab the arrows, it moves it up and down along the axes, right? But you also have this, um, these, these little squares. Here. And if you grab the square, that isolates the movement along everything except whatever that axis is. So if I click on the red one, it's moving it along the Y axis and the Z axis, but it's not going left or right along the X axis. If I grab the green one, it will move it along the plane that is made up by the X and the Z axis, but I can't get it to go forward and backward along the Y axis. And if I click the blue one, it will move it all over the plane created by the X and the Y axis, but I can't get it to go up and down along the Z axis. So that is a way to isolate movement if you wanna keep your movement within a certain plane. Um, We've also got a rotate, so you can grab and rotate around the Y axis or rotate around the X axis or rotate around the Z axis, okay? You can always um, bring yourself back to orthographic view and, oh boy, now it's all rotated around and I don't like it, so I'm going to hit Control Z, Control Z, Control Z and bring it back and if I want to snap my Suzanne back to the world center, the origin here. I think I can do Alt G. Yeah, that's a good one. Alt G as in George. 
okay? We'll snap your Suzanne back to the origin. I like that one. So if I've got my move tool and I go, whoa, <laughs> over here, and let's say I hit my rotate tool and I've gone and rotated it around, what happens if I hit Alt G? Oh, well, it'll snap Suzanne back to the center, but it's not gonna bring it back so that her face is towards me. So I'm gonna hit Control Z and just bring it back that way. Or I'm gonna try uh, redo, redo, redo. Let's get Suzanne back over into that funny location. And let's say I hit Alt G and snap her back, right, to the origin. There's another way that I can get her face forward. So let me pull out this lovely box again. And you'll notice that she's rotated 36.5 degrees in the positive X direction, 14.9 degrees in the positive Y direction, and negative 43.3 degrees in the Z direction, right? Well, what happens? Can I just change all those back to zero? Zero, zero, zero. Oh, check it out, friends. So these, uh, this ability to manually manipulate things is pretty cool, okay? Like for example, if I wanted to duplicate my Suzanne, and I'm just gonna go ahead and put my pointer on so that I don't have all of these other tools sticking out of her head. Let's say I hit Shift D to duplicate her, and you'll notice that she just sticks right to my mouse. And I can isolate the movement um, along the X axis, for example, by just clicking X, and then I can just slide her right over and then click and drop her, all right? I'm gonna go one for orthographic view, and then I'm going to, I wanna pan over, so I'm gonna shift four. Oops, that's the wrong one. What is it? Control four, control six, move them over. <laughs> if it's not shift, it's control, okay? Just, <laughs> just play around with it, you'll figure it out. So let's say I wanna make this Suzanne twice the size of that one. So the scale of this Suzanne on the left is one, one, one. So if I wanna double it, I just hit two, two, two. Now I have a Suzanne that's twice the scale, okay? So I can um, hit G and X and move her over just a little bit more along the X axis, okay? So boom. Um, these are just really great. Um, I can rotate. Uh, remember, you just have to look at your axes and just visualize what I want to do. I could do 45 degrees to the left. So if I did that, I'd have to rotate it around. It looks like the Y axis, and I'd have to go negative 45. And sure enough, that's going to put her at negative 45 degrees. Or if I want to do totally sideways, negative 90 Okay, and if I wanted to move this one so it was the other way, I'd go positive 90 and her head would face the other direction. Okay, so these are pretty powerful. And when you're finished using them, uh, you can just uh, close that up. Now, I believe you can also uh, rotate using R, Y, negative 90 and voila. So you can just type those numbers in and Blender knows. So this one right here, I'm gonna hit R, Y, 90. And I just hit enter to release it. So you don't even need this panel. You can just enter stuff. It's so cool. All right, I just wanna make sure that we're clear. So this is the cursor, so you can move the cursor anywhere you want, right? So that when you add a new object, um, you're adding it someplace else. So if I wanna add a sphere over here, I can add a sphere over there just by moving the cursor over there. If I wanna get that cursor back to the origin again, I can just go Shift S and I can put that cursor to the origin, okay? All right. Now, what if I have this monkey, oops, I'm on the cursor, so all I'm doing is moving. I'm gonna hit Control-Z and, no, that's not gonna, okay. 
So yeah, let me just edit, redo, and bring my ball back. So um, I've got to get my select again to select my monkey because all I was doing was moving my cursor around. Now I have to hit Shift S and bring my cursor back to the world or origin again. Okay, um, so let's say that I want my cursor to be right on that object and I want to add something right to the object. Um, let's select that object and hit the Shift S and see if we have a, the option. So do we have a cursor to select it? Yes, we do. Let's click that. Cursor to select it brought my cursor to the middle of Suzanne. So let's say I did that because I want to add a hat and a hat is the shape of a cylinder. So I'm going to add a cylinder there and now I can just apply the move tool to it and I can slide it up and put it on top of Suzanne's head. I can, I've got my cursor right in the middle of Suzanne. I can add another cylinder and I can move that one. Well, let's, I'm going to scale that one first. So I'm going to come over here and use the scale tool, scale, and I'm going to flatten it out. So I'm going to flatten it nice. And I'm also going to make it nice and wide because that's going to be the brim of her hat. And now I can click on this move tool again and I can slide that up. And now I've got a hat. Ta-da. Now, if I had not moved my cursor there, and I had had my cursor over here in the center, which I'm going to show you now by clicking Shift S and put that cursor to the world origin. Let's say I added that cylinder, okay, and I want to put it on top of her head. I'm going to move this out of the way so I can just demonstrate for you how much fun that's going to be. All right, so now I've got this, and I'm trying to get it just where I want it, and yeah, I did a pretty good job. That worked good. But if you haven't been doing Blender for a really long time, but it might not be precise. Like, look, it's a little off center. That triangle is a little smaller than that one. So it might not be totally centered if I do it that way. Um, so that's the reason why you might want to take the cursor and put it right on your object. And that Shift S snapping feature that is so handy. Okay. So let's go ahead and put that cursor back to the world origin where it belongs. Okay, and then of course you do, and I'm going to hold down control in my, um, oops, I got to click over here, control in my eight to, to pan it down a little bit. You do have the option, and I'm just going to bring this, whoopsie, I'm holding on to that one and I'm trying to move something else. Remember, got to have that selected. So I'm going to bring that back over and let's just take it. Oh, see how far off that is? Oh. And when I went to scale that, I only scaled it along the X axis. So what I needed to do on that, and I'm gonna hit Control Z and get rid of that for a second. What I needed to do is Shift S. Whoops, I don't have anything selected. Okay, Shift S. Whoops. Shift S. We're gonna do cursor to selected. We're gonna add that cylinder and we're going to use this transform tool which will allow us hopefully to transform along two let's no scale ah there's the one we don't we want to transform so this is the scale one remember we um we don't want to do just the x or just the y we want to do both but we don't want it to uh, size along the z-axis. So I'm gonna hit the, z the blue one because that's the one that I wanna exclude. If I hover my cursor over there, it says, all right, well, let's just go ahead. We're gonna scale it and it's gonna scale outward in both the x and the y direction, which is what we're wanting. Okay, and now I can go ahead and scale it down in just the z direction. All right, and now I can grab that move tool and I can slide it up. Boom. And let's see. Perfect. Okay. So you get the idea now. But also you can tell that that cylinder that I have up on top, that's not center. So I'm going to delete it. And since I've got my cursor in the center there, I'll go ahead and add that cylinder again. Grab that move tool, slide it up, 
and I can do the same thing. I can grab a hold of that rescale tool and I want to scale it just along the X and Y and not along the Z. So I'm going to make it a little wider like that. Perfect. Bing. Okay, so I want to show you just a couple of more shortcuts. This, this one is really cool. So remember we've got that the rim of that hat and we want to widen the rim. Let's say we're going to widen it some more. We want to scale it along the X and the Y, but we don't want to scale the Z because we like the height of the rim, okay? But we want to spread it out some more. So t you can manually exclude the Z axis by just hitting the S, which is your scale, right? And now hit Shift and Z. And notice how when I move my mouse, it's only going to scale it along X and Y. So hitting Shift Z excluded Z and then just click to drop it. Okay, so let's go ahead and say I want to scale something and exclude the Y axis. So I'm going to Let's do it with this sphere, okay? So let's see what happens when I go S for scale and then hit Shift Y. Now look what happens. Okay. Now it probably isn't obvious right away what just happened, but when I start to move around 3D space, it becomes obvious that it scaled, <laughs> it scaled along the X from left to right along the Z up and down, but it didn't scale along the Y. It didn't get plumper in the middle. So that shift is really helpful. That also works with your moving something. So if you wanna grab that, if I wanna G for grab, and I wanna hit, uh, let's see, I wanna move it up and to the left. So I wanna exclude Y. So I'm gonna go Shift Y, and now I can just grab it and move it over here, and I can dip it right down in the middle of Suzanne's head, okay? And voila, there we have it. Okay, so I'm not crazy about that. I need to move it over. I'm gonna go G and move it along X only. Just hit G and X, and then I'm gonna go G, Z only, and I'm gonna move it down a little bit, okay? So now I have a little 3D logo that I've created. I could pop it out a little bit more so that her chin's not popping out. So I could go uh, G, Y, and I can move it out just a touch. And there, I just have kind of like this little 3D pin, this little 3D button that I've created from the front view anyway. Back view is not looking so great. Of course, this also works with rotate R. So I'm gonna go R. I think that this would be a good time to show you uh, the box select. Let's get this move tool and I can just grab this, move it over here. Um, I'm gonna show you box select, okay? So remember there's this shortcut. Uh, you could actually, I think this might be a box select. It says select box, let's see. I'm gonna click on that. The shortcut for box select is to hit B. Um, but it looks like if I just grab that and go like this and make a box around it, Oh, that is so sweet. You used to not have that ability to do that. You used to just have to hit the letter B. And now you've got this really cool tool that does it. All right, so now that I've got that, let's say I want to rotate it. I want to rotate it back and to the side a little bit. So I'm going to exclude the Z axis. So I'm going to go R, Shift Z, and now I can... Oh, that turned out a little different than what I was thinking. So I'm going to go ahead and drop it and I'll hit control Z. I'm going to do shift. Oops, I got to hit R first. Sorry, R. Tell it what to do first. Rotate. Shift Y. Oh, hello. <laughs> That's fun. Let's see what R shift X. I'm going to hit control Z. R shift 
Well, isn't that fun? Okay, so that is a way for you to isolate your rotations as well. And of course, you always have Control Z to bring it back. Yes, I'm not sure why. Let me see. I will hold down Shift and select them each separately. Try it here. Object, join. Okay. It didn't like it when I did box select. So note to selves, if you want to link or join or group uh, some objects together, don't select them using the box select tool. Okay. So um, now that they're all one group, I should be able to do the Shift S and selection to cursor, which is at the origin. And now it brings the whole thing as one group down. Woohoo! And you might be wondering, why are you showing us all of these things? Well, because a huge part of learning how to do what you want to do in Blender is learning how to solve problems. You're going to be in here and something's going to happen and you're like, how do I get that over there? How do I get these two things to move together? I mean, it's, it's just problem solving. So I'm just trying to create some problems of my own and solve them for you so that when you're down the road, you can go, wait a minute. I remember she had that problem. This is how she did it. Okay, so one of the things I wanted to show you and the whole reason why I moved this to the center and I'm holding down control and four and six to pan left and right and eight and two as I'm holding down control to pan up and down. Um, one of the things that, and I'm gonna grab this guy, move him, I wanted to show you is that once you have your object in the center, if you wanted to just move it over to the right five units, you could actually go G for grab and move, X for along the X axis, and five for five units to the right. And oops, I had the wrong Suzanne selected. So let me grab this object right here that I have joined together. I'm going to hit G, X, and five. And it moves it over five units to the right. Words two, G, X, negative 10. And that'll take you over to the left 10, okay? So this is literally just like your math class. Okay, so that is also going to work for scaling. So if I wanna get that back to the center, I can just go G, X, 10, and that'll move that 10 places to the right, bring me back to the origin. Let's scale it. Let's say I want to go S2. I've just doubled and hit enter. I've just doubled its size, okay? If I want to half the size, let's see if I, I don't know what's gonna happen. I might break this. I'm gonna hit S for scale, and I'm gonna go 0.5. Yep, it made it half the size. I'm gonna hit Control Z. I'm gonna go S for scale and do 0.25 for one quarter. Yep, so yeah, your uh, your decimals are coming in handy now, your fractions. If you know that one quarter of the size is 0.25, okay, I'm gonna hit Control Z. Whoa, hit one, okay. Now let's say I wanna go one tenth of the size, S.1. So yeah, there's a dime. If that's a dollar, that's a dime. <laughs> okay, so for now, that's enough on manipulating objects in the, in the space, in the 3D space. Good job. Practice that.